Okay, it looks like the camera had stopped for some reason and I was filming for the last um, 10 minutes and the camera was off. I'm back here now in the corner where the greenhouse is, the unused greenhouse, the corner of the property which is right there. And that's a rear shot of all the tomatoes that I've planted. I don't know how we're going to get through all these tomatoes, but we'll see. And uh, in the previous recording, which didn't come through, I was talking about each variety of tomato. Never mind. I don't think you guys are interested in that anyway. Um, this was labeled Red Lama by Dailies, but it was a mistake. I think it's just um, a Bullock's Heart Cussed Apple. So we'll find out what that actually is. In due time, I planted it in the ground a month ago, up against the, um, well, close to the to the fence, right? That little guy there. And then we've got the tomatoes and potatoes and lettuce and mulberry tree lettuce, which is doing really good. Uh, the tree lettuce has surprised me; it's done very well. So highly recommended for Melbourne. It works guys as you can see I've got one two three and there's another one down there so I've got four of them and they're doing great and we haven't tried them yet in uh, salad but um, let's see mmm raw very nice okay sapodilla oh wow looks like it's gonna set flowers and just like the sapodilla in the front yard these flowers, I think they're flowers, I don't know. Yeah, they are. Wow, there's like 10 of them. There's 10 flowers on each, on each branch. On this, on this, 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 and this. There's like 50 sapodilla flowers coming. <laughs> on this baby tree. Actually, there's only three there. Five there five there yeah and here at the top um, there seems to be um, eight yeah so about 30 30 flowers coming on that sapodilla this is the prolific grafted sapodilla okay so then we have this guy here who does not like direct sun the supper deer loves direct sun, but this guy doesn't. That's a quite monk. He prefers, um, he's like the star fruit tree. He likes shade and wind protection. He's, he's fussy. This is one of those fussy trees where everything has to be just right. So it's a quite muck, quite muck seedling. But the good news is, guys, this little sook. It's finally woken up. Can you believe it? It took him all these months to wake up. So in uh, spring he did nothing. Three months of nothing. Of absolutely nothing. And now it looks like he's going to town with uh, new growth. Right? New growth everywhere. And these are last year's leaves. Which are falling off as you touch them okay yeah yeah okay so let him do his thing crazy tree and then we have this beauty the um, Brazilian cassette apple or um, Rolinia and I've got a lot of good news to report on him finally some really good news he also did nothing all um, spring Seem spring seems to be a wasted season here with tropicals not with um, not with apples and peaches and mulberries <laughs> they take advantage of every season but the tropicals guys these tropicals do nothing in spring nothing nothing at all nothing it's three months of nothing. Nothing. The same with this Rolinia. Nothing. He did nothing all spring. 
and now the month of December, it's like party, party, let's party, let's be a Rilinia, let's be a Rilinia, finally. So now um, I can happily report, guys, all these, look at all these flowers. I mean, these came already in November, but I didn't get close. Look. See all these flowers? Uh, there's literally 30 flowers or more on the on the Rulinia. Right? Maybe more. Look. And I think I mentioned this in a in a previous video on the Rulinia about a month ago. But um the good news now is not only is it flowering, it's pushing out a lot of fla uh, leaves. It's getting bushy. Bushy. Right? Not just flowers. It's got all these uh, new leaves. Nice leaves too. Not as big as they can be. But a lot better than what they were all spring mate all spring that were shocking shocking so that's uh good news on the uh Rolinia. i got some more volunteer tomatoes coming i don't know how they just sprouted that of nowhere evidently the seed the seeds blew themselves here this is the um trombone zucchini which is going to town it's taken off in the last two weeks of um, December. But they're, they're in the shape of trombones. That's why that name. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven giant zucchinis hanging there. And these are pretty awesome. It's getting windy now. I've got some volunteer potatoes from the kitchen compost. Another tree lettuce, um, the parf parfianca, pomegranate, what a champion. These trees are champions, guys. It's only been in the ground two months and it's doubled in height. And I cut away one of the main, actually I have to cut another one away. I cut away one of its main um, leading um, trunks. But now it's got another one, so I think, oh geez, I have to cut all that away too. I don't want that down there. I want a tree, I don't want a shrub. That means I have to get rid of all that. Wow, o almost half the tree has to go. Almost half the tree has to go, guys. All that. All that section there has to go. If I cut off that branch down there. Yeah, because I want this. I want this, this main stem. To have a tree not a shrub we don't want a shrub here on the uh let's see the name again parfi anka dwarf pomegranate yeah, the sweetest and most delicious pomegranate in the world wow really now we'll find out about that okinawa spinach has come back the green sapoti, lots of sugar cane, bananas up there. Kim over there. Hey, Kim. Wow, what a surprise. Nice to see you in um, Fruitopia's tropical garden section. I came out to, to check on my cucumbers and my uh, trombone zucchini. Oh, cool. You happy with the uh, yeah, progress? Really she likes the trombone zucchini and the cucumbers so uh, check out the Cape gooseberries guys this is a volunteer Cape gooseberry plant which I did not plant this guy down here between the the bananas very invasive and back on that wire I'm trying to grow cucumbers good luck good luck with that another sapodilla here has finally um, um, well seeing the light and it's trying to grow that's the uh, Krausui 
I don't think this one's going to make it here, by the way. doesn't seem happy. This star fruit also doesn't seem happy. I don't know why. It's still a skeleton. Um, that's called the Siam something. The Siam something star fruit. Whereas this star fruit is very happy. Look at the difference. That's the Shri Kembangan. Very happy. Right? See the difference? With the star fruit and the star fruit in the same climate zone, in the same um, location. So this one is fully coming back from winter. Right? Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, I've got some yam growing here. Um, okay, so the blue java bananas. We've got two racks, as you guys know, one there and one up there. Another persimmon, which is very happy. This is the flat persimmon. It's called the flat persimmon. And it looks like a tropical persimmon to me because of the leaves. Uh, it's the only persimmon with leaves this big. It's like massive. What you would see up in Queensland. He decided not to flower yet. That's all right. One of two grafted black sapotis back here. The mar and the bernica and another trombone zucchini I put in let it roam around dwarf apricot that took the year off the uh, Jerusalem artichoke again choking the little Tasmanian pepper plant I put there from Bunnings poor guy where is he there <laughs> the mountain pepper is getting uh, choked it's all right. He'll make it. Plants, plants find a way, right? Chompu Longan still looking very sad, but he's alive and he's coming back. I don't know what on earth happened to this. I think it got too much water in winter, even though it was a dry winter. These are Kim's cucumbers that I planted for her, but they keep falling. We had problems with snails as always, so I've had to. Let's take them up from the wind you know how it is guys yeah so a few of them have caught on and they're pretty happy yeah and as you can see the Cape gooseberry is taken over it's taken over guys I have to keep cutting it back so where you want success you don't get it and where you don't want success, you get it. Pretty much um, how life goes, right? If you let it just roll and happen. And I guess that's uh, one of the lessons. The, the new jackfruit, the Malay, Malay variety. See how, how he's getting shaded by the bananas? I know jackfruit likes sun and heat, but when it's this small, guys, I prefer to protect him. He's only been there like a month or two. So I want him protected. When he gets this big, then he can get full sun. This uh, black sapote has been here for almost three years. So of course he can get direct sun. Of course he can. But not the jackfruit. He's going to cry and sook in the, in the hot sun. Then I've got uh, the tropical ginger, ornamental ginger. Let's go around. Bird of Paradise. My seedling macadamia, which is 12 years old now and massive. Um, can you grow a macadamia in Melbourne? You sure can. I have to keep hacking it back. So this is a recent prune of the macadamia. This is the kiwi berry, which did not flower this year, so it took a year off. Yeah, so that's the macadamia, which um, is very vigorous, guys. After 12 years, now it's going to town. 
Now, right everywhere, there's nuts everywhere. They're still young. These are new. These are the New Year nuts. So. Yeah. Okay. The lime, the cherries, the loquats, the loquats um, are coming back with new growth. I have to prune this tree. It's getting out of hand. This is the seedling that I planted six, seven years ago. And I've got to take off the um, the growth at the back there. See that? See that double side leader? I got I cut. I actually cut it, but I didn't finish the job. And now after the cut, it's decided to grow back. See how vigorous loquat is? Loquat is the champion. It's the champion tree. It wins hands down for Melbourne. If you want a quick growing canopy tree that's got a tropical look to it and is evergreen with delicious fruit loquat the uh, north american pawpaw didn't do anything this year I took a year off our first uh, uh pisan Ceylong banana flowers coming yay that was a bad time it took three to four years i think four years maybe five years to set its first flower guys yeah, so that's um, the Pisan Silong clump there with its first uh, flower. Look how beautiful uh, the leaves are. The leaves are pink. They're young leaves. See that? So pretty. Instead of green, it's pink. So it's a very pretty banana. I just wonder what it's going to taste like. There it is there. We'll have to wait and see. It's going to take one whole year till they're ready to harvest. And over here, we already have a bunch of bananas from the Rajapuri, which will be ready to harvest any day. Any day now, those ones. This is a different clump, right? The Rajapuri clump. And back there, I've got the mission fig. I think it's a mission fig, guys. I'm not sure. One of you will have, have to help me identify what it is. I've took cuttings from this, and I put them in five big pots. And they're all in the front yard. Very uh, prolific. But again, the birds beat me. Yeah, and it's a dwarf size fig tree, which is great. And back there, I've got the Ortega. White Sapote. which is doing its thing always growing, always flowering, always fruiting it's always doing something you're a tiger right, this was meant to be a pollinator but I don't need it anymore because all of my um, white sapotis are fruiting uh, without its help so another lemon tree which doesn't get that speckle at the bottom, I don't know what happened to the other one. Lemon verbena tree that I've had for 10 years. Coming back now with new leaves. And I think we're done. Oh yeah, I didn't go to the middle. Hang on. These are... Um, oh, there's Kim. What are you eating, Kim? Mandarins. Mandarins. Ooh. Um, can you take my shirt? Here you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... Uh, the new trees I got recently, let me, let me get closer. This is the white, the white Jabudikaba. It's called uh, Oriana. And it's got this funky look, like it's, um, like it's struggling. See how the leaves look? The leaves don't look perky or happy, like the Grimmel or the Sabara. It's, um, it, it looks like a sook. It's got a sook look. See the leaves, how they're soaking? Well, welcome to the life of our Oriana Jabuticaba. 
um, and I thought something was wrong until I researched. This is the Cedar Bay Cherry, which is back, come back. Very slow growing, extremely slow growing. The uh, Pitanga Tumba, I found out you need a second one for, for fruit because it's flowered eight times in two years and we haven't had any fruit. So the new one is coming from Dailies next week to pollinate it. Um, I don't know what happened to my Costada Jabos, they lost their leaves. Both of them. Um, I hope it. I hope they come back. Over here is the madrono. Madrono is uh, happy, looking good. These are new, new plants that I got recently. That's a cinnamon, looking pretty happy. Um, and over there is the wax jambu, the purple variety, which I picked up from an Indian gro Sri Lankan in uh, a Sri Lankan grocery store. About a week ago. <clears throat> I had to try again guys. I've had no luck with wax jambu. I tried the pink, I tried the red, I tried the white and they all died. Okay this is the uh, Wampi again, the reed avocado, the Grimmel jabuticaba. Oh and this jabuticaba here looks really good. I wish I could put it in the ground somewhere. <clears throat> this is the giant. It's a it's a it's a backup giant. I already have a giant in the ground. But this one here, I want that in the ground. Um, I think we're done, guys. Is there any more? Oh, I've got one more Jabuticaba here, which is also happy and healthy. This is the, the red hybrid. Yeah, and it's got new growth. See how I'm keeping them in the, in the shade when they're young? Oh, almost forgot. I've also got this one here, which has come back from uh, a skeleton in winter in the greenhouse. The uh, the Lacucha or Monkey Jack. Yeah. So, just pretty happy. In the shade. Put these in the shade. They're sooks. That's Daly's gift. The Black Sapote gift I got. Very, very happy. Right. And another one here. So, I've got two of them very happy look very lush so both black supporters from dailies are doing great um another north american pawpaw from dailies doing good i've got another one actually in the ground i planted two of them there's the other giant jabuticaba and these are two grimmels grimmel one and grimmel two that's another North American pawpaw here, under the shade of the fig tree, right? That fig tree there. They want shade in the first three years. And that's the Lee, the Lee jujube, which um, has finally set its first fruit up here, right? Not much, not much on the, uh, on the Lee. But it's, it's pretty healthy. Oh, and also the uh, native Australian fig, the sandpiper. Let's get closer. Oh, there's the other guava. Almost forgot about that. This is um, supposedly the sweetest guava of all. And I lost the tag. Where's the tag? Yep. Oh, well. Yep. Well, no. Oh, here it is. Oh, we've got the tag. Yay. Oh, man. It's the white alabad. The white alabad guava. Yeah, so I put that in the ground too back in uh, early spring. Okay. So this fig is called the sandpaper bird's eye. And it's four meters. It's four meters tall, and it's only been in the ground um, about a year or two. I can't remember, guys. Look at it. It's massive. I want another canopy tree here. That's why I put it there. I want this all to be a canopy up there. No sun, thanks. We don't want any sun. Even though the jujube 
is a sun lover. I've got three jujubes here. And a guava. They're all sun lovers. And the jabuticaba is a sun lover, but it can take full shade. Um, I want the canopy here. I want the canopy tree. So I'm going to clip those soon. Those tall branches so it can start growing like an umbrella. Have I forgot anything? Yes, I've got two new guavas planted. I put those in the ground a couple of weeks ago. Oh, the star apple, the caimito. Hasn't done anything in two months. It hasn't gone backwards, it hasn't gone forwards. Nothing. That one is um, in the sun right now, but it usually gets full shade in the morning. Nothing at all. Nothing to report on the star apples, guys. It'd be interesting to see how long they last in winter. <laughs> Another multi-grafted apple here, doing good. The choco has climbed onto my neighbor's apple tree. We've got problems up there. Another mulberry here. This is the uh, black Pakistani. <sighs> yeah, I wanted to show you what the bloody rats are doing. The rats are honing out my, um, my mandarins. But I've got so many, guys. I really don't care. Look at this. You think I should care? Look. There's only two of us. Kim just ate two or three of them. I'm going to eat two or three. That's six. There's 60 on there. Some of the apples that we got from my uh, apple tree. This is the Jonathan. I butchered this like five years ago with a chainsaw. And ever since it hasn't been producing much at all. And that's fine. There's some more uh, ice cream beans here. Look at them. They're almost five foot tall, guys. Look at the apples. of uh, the apples. The birds have done to my neighbor's uh, apple tree and she doesn't care look see that she doesn't care so because of that because her, the apple tree is bare not bare unprotected all the um, parrots strike my trees I decided to put the the three stone fruit back here the ones that were in pots that I salvaged from last year when I pulled them out of the ground. Remember, I, I replaced the peach nectarines with uh, two new plum trees. Well, I didn't throw the trees out. I put them in pots here. And I had them in the front in pots. So now they're, they're here in the, um, the, the backyard along the, along the house wall. Out of the way. Because they were in my way. Okay, the two new guavas in the ground. Starting with a Thai guava that I've had for three years. This is fully loaded with um, flower buds. Let's, this is never fruited. Let's see how it does. This was 100% clay. Someone asked me in Instagram about um, planting guava in clay. This is a sloping property. It slopes down. It goes down like a slide. So I didn't have to worry about mounding. I didn't mount, mound it at all. It's level. And then here, there's a slight mound because of the slope. So what I did, guys, is I mixed um, sand, paving sand, into the clay. That was a month ago. And during that month that it's been in the ground, it's, it's um, put out all these fl um, flower buds. So I think it's pretty happy. <clears throat> Back here, I've got a brown turkey fig, which some of you know. And the figs are coming. It's pretty much loaded. Hard to see because they're small. And here I've got that mission fig, which I showed you up against the fence. That I put in pots, five of them. We'll find out exactly what kind of fig that is. And there's the, um, the super dwarf angel peach which I salvaged from the front where I planted the uh, mango you know the early gold mango that died or well, that's looking looking like it's gonna die it's where this peach was so this survived the transplant just with a lot of um, dead wood which I haven't pulled off yet and another backup orange which is fully loaded look at all the oranges we finished these oranges a couple of weeks ago. 
half of them composted and the other half in our bellies and that's a red daca banana that doesn't look like it's going to um, flower it doesn't want to flower what happens with this I've, I've, I've told this story before whenever it gets to flower stage the mother dies see that's ready to flower now that's the last leaf the final leaf before the flower comes but look what happens it's ready it's ready to fall to the ground the um, the stalk has rotted it gets this rot at the bottom whereas all the um, pups are very strong and this has been going on for 12 years 12 years guys I don't know what's wrong with this red daca along the, the side of the house here so we're not gonna get a, a stalk that that mother will just collapse okay I'm gonna finish off with this final guava which I also put in the ground about two weeks ago the same clay soil uh, this is the gift I got from Vu this is the ruby look at the critters have done to the leaves guys no mercy at all look at all the holes right look at that they've eaten the leaves like amazing but anyway overall it's looking very good very happy and that's it I've got two guavas on the side I've got some papayas coming from from uh, dailies next week which I'm gonna plant here on the side of the house which I've never done before well, actually I have had papaya here in pots and they lasted till July August and then they died in from root rot in one of these big pots so what I'm gonna do this time because it's sloping I'm gonna put him here in the ground uh, I ordered four one two three four and we'll see how they do I've never done that before with papaya so four new papaya coming I know it's late January is late to be planting papaya but it is what it is and the pitanga duba that's coming too all right guys long video but you asked for it you asked for it guys here's the house avocado with tons of um, fruit all right so at the end of the day we don't succeed with everything but overall it's pretty much a, a happy ending it's a happy ending guys even though everything doesn't work out yeah it's a happy ending I'm gonna cut some of these um, Wurtz avocados I take about five or six off a week to give to Kim so we've always got a supply they're up high I can't reach them see up there can't reach them that's uh, three meters up there's a big beauty there they're all up there guys they're all hiding from me yeah okay there's a couple of more here I can get mm. all right guys I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to um, share this video if you enjoyed it also don't forget to um, put a like if you've enjoyed the video and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't they're the new words um, fruits for next year done a lot of work in here guys I got a really amazing um, message sent to me a couple of days ago on Christmas Day by someone he was so nice he was so nice a very uplifting and uh, um, what's the word encouraging message thanking me for everything I've done that I've inspired him to do what he's doing and um, 
I really like that, guys. I appreciate the um, positive feedback. Thank you very much, sir. You know who you are. I'm going to go inside now and have some lunch after this long, long, long video. And we'll see you from the next video, guys. Bye-bye now.